All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back, and welcome to Bermuda. If you don't know where Bermuda is, then you really should have paid more attention in school. But I'll tell you anyway, it's 650 miles off the coast of North Carolina, right here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Its nickname is the Jewel of the Atlantic. Can't work out why, can you? Standing there behind me is Fort St. Catherine. Now, Bermuda's been a British territory since 1609, when Sir George Summer crashed here in a hurricane on his way to Virginia. I arrived here last week a few hours before Hurricane Fiona did, so I know what that's like. On a more personal note, this is where I was born. I mean, not right here, obviously, but on this island. And it's where I spent my formative years. But I haven't been back in 20 years, so I'm really excited to show you around. And wait until you see the car that I've rented. I guarantee you'll have never, ever seen one before. That's got you excited, hasn't it? It's a car that's so rare, I didn't even know it existed. I should explain first that Bermuda's a really wealthy place. It's a tax haven. It's home to celebrities and billionaires. So naturally, you might expect it to be like Monaco or Puerto Banus. You'd expect people to be driving around in Koenigseggs and Bugattis, wouldn't you? Well, let me put you out of your misery. Let me show you what I've rented. Well, feast your eyes on this little babe magnet. It's a Chinese EV called a Jin Du. In my mind, it should have been called a Jin Don't. Anyway, this is the D2 model, which has been around since 2015. It has a 47 kilowatt motor and a range of about 150 kilometers, so it's perfect for this little island. I've hired this from a company called Rugged Rentals based in St George's. If you ever come to Bermuda, and I urge you to do so, then check them out. Ask for TJ, I'm sure he'll hook you up. You might be wondering why I've rented such a funny little car. Well, I've got a perfectly good explanation for that. You see, Bermuda's such a tiny place. It's 22 miles long and three miles wide at its widest point. As you might expect, at just 21 square miles, they have some really tight rules about motor cars. They just don't want this beautiful place getting clogged up with too many vehicles, which is a perfectly sensible thing to do in my mind. Until very recently, you couldn't hire a car at all, so tourists were forced to rent mopeds, which as we all know are complete and utter death traps. So these EVs just make more sense. Even if you're a Bermuda resident, they're strict about what you can and can't drive. For example, it can't be over a certain length or width, and you're only allowed one car per household. Engine size is limited too, to I think two litres. That doesn't really matter an awful lot though, because across the whole island there's a strict 35 km an hour speed limit. That's just 21 miles an hour. So anything more than a two litre is just literally a waste of fuel. I've always thought here would be a good place to buy a used car from, because it just won't have been driven above 40 km an hour, ever. We're starting off today's magical mystery tour in the historic town of St George's, which used to be Bermuda's capital until that changed to Hamilton in 1815. St George's is the oldest continually habitated English town in the New World. How's that for a fun fact? It's such a beautiful place this. I've really forgotten how pretty it was. Every day I just drive around in awe. This morning I drove from Hamilton to St George's which took me about 40 minutes. Obviously I'm doing 21 miles an hour. By the time I got there it dawned on me I couldn't remember how I'd got there. I was too busy daydreaming the whole time. It's almost like going to Wimbledon. You're just constantly watching left, right, left, right. Every time you go around another corner, there's just something prettier than the previous corner. Something that I'd forgotten was just how close you are to the water at all times. You can always see it. The buildings are all painted in pastel colours. The beaches are pink. The water's turquoise. I just can't think of anywhere nicer. I keep getting all these memories flooding back. You know, when I see a certain thing, or hear a certain noise, or smell a certain smell. It's really evocative. Now that I'm back here for the first time in 20 years, all I can think about is moving back here for good. But that raises a question. If I were to come back here, what car would I drive? I obviously can't have a Range Rover or an AMG GT, so that's out of the question. So what would I buy? In many ways, as strange as it sounds, I find it quite liberating that they're so restrictive, because everybody has to have something average, even if you're Oprah. It doesn't matter if you're Beyonce or Jay-Z, all you're gonna drive is a Daihatsu Syrian, and that's it, so just get used to it. And I quite like that. It's quite egalitarian. Sometimes when I'm at work bored and I get five or 10 minutes free, I'll go onto the internet and I'll have a look at Bermuda property for sale, just out of curiosity really, just to daydream. And what's funny is you'll see some beautiful waterfront villa for sale with its own jetty for about $10 million. And then when you look on the driveway, they've got something like an 05 Renault Scenic. And nowhere else in the world will you see that. And I quite like that, something quite charming about it and sweet. We're just passing the airport now, about to get on the causeway. Just look at the water here, it's so clear you can almost drink it. What I've seen quite a lot of here are EVs, and this is the perfect place for an EV. 
I mean, you only do 20, 30, 40 miles a day. Most people have got off-road parking so they can charge it overnight. And then you're all set for the next day. It really would make sense. So I'd probably buy something like a Kia Soul EV or even a Nissan Leaf. They're words I thought I'd never say. As a car geek, you see lots of cars here that you just don't see in Europe. There are loads of weird Renaults and Toyotas that I'd never seen before. They're not particularly nice or attractive, but I suppose here in Bermuda it doesn't really matter. You see a lot of Daihatsu Terrioses here, you know. I wonder if they've got the same rust problems that they do in the UK. You also see a lot of new shaped Suzuki Jimnys. Now that would be a cool car to have. Not the most practical, but certainly a cool thing to run around in. I've also noticed the majority of cars here are automatic. Most people run around in things like Kia Picantos and Hyundai i10s and things like that. Honda Jazzes or Honda Fits as they're known here. I think being so remote, you'd have to have something that was reliable. You wouldn't want to be off the road while you're waiting for parts to come in from Europe or America. I think then you'd need something Japanese or Korean. Something like a Kia Soul EV. Or something like a Toyota CHR Hybrid, that would be okay. Something interesting that I've learned about Bermuda just today, in fact, is that you're allowed a classic car in addition to the one other car that you're allowed in your household. But you're only allowed to use that classic car on public holidays or Sundays. Last night on Front Street in Hamilton, I saw an absolutely immaculate old MG. So that's made me think, what kind of classic car would I have? Would they let me bring in my old SL55, maybe? Or my DB7? Or my old 330 in Oxford Green? That'd look nice here, wouldn't it? Anyway, enough rabbiting on now. You're probably wondering what this little Jindu's like, aren't you? In fact, you've probably not, are you? But I'll tell you anyway. It's quite spacious, it's quite civilised, it's very quiet because we're running on electricity alone. There are no fossil fuels being burned. It's about as big as a Smart 4 too, but it feels a bit roomier. There's plenty of room inside. The boots are very good size for your luggage. Because it's an EV, you get instant torque, so it feels very nippy. Bear in mind when the speed limit's just 21 miles an hour and there are no motorways. This is the perfect territory for an EV. It's also quite a hilly place, so every time you go downhill, it tops up the battery with its regeneration. Aside from the fact that I'm sat on the wrong side of the car, because here in Bermuda we drive on the left, you're usually in a right-hand drive car, not a left. After a few minutes, you do get used to that, and it's a really easy car to drive. The steering's very light, the suspension isn't too hard. I'm sure if I were allowed to go much faster, I would uncover loads of faults with this car, but at this kind of speed, you really can't. You get this rotary gear selector here, which is a bit like one you'd find on a Jaguar or a Land Rover. Only this feels like it's been made in a factory in China on a very tight budget. That's probably because it has. All of the buttons and switches feel incredibly cheap and plasticky and nasty. But I'm impressed with the level of tech you get. You get this big touchscreen iPad thing here with a reverse camera, air conditioning, electric mirrors, electric windows. I'm just coming through Flats Village now, which is one of the prettiest places in Bermuda. I mean, look at that harbour there. It almost makes you bite the back of your hand. Did you see that E30 convertible then? That would be quite a cool car to have here. Oh, speed bump. Yeah, it's not too firm. Styling-wise, this looks like an unsuccessful marriage between a G-Wiz and an Aston Martin Cigna. It just makes you wonder, why can't the Chinese be more innovative? Why can't they come up with their own design rather than copying everyone else's homework? For example, the key you get is copied straight from VW. It's just like an old Passat key. The Chinese can't even design a key themselves without copying somebody. It sounds a bit narcissistic this, but when you're in a good-looking car, you can't help but try and catch your reflection as you go past a shop window. You don't want to do that in a Jindu. It's quite tragic looking. It almost looks like a, like a cartoon car. It's a bit pathetic looking, but I'm quite pleased that it's painted in black and not a primary colour, because then it would look like I'd borrowed Noddy and Big Ears car. Everything's been done to a very low standard. And I mean, give me this car in Manchester and I would hate you for it. But here, it doesn't matter. I'm actually really pleased to be back in something with four wheels rather than two. The scooter's fine for nipping around town on, but go further than 25, 30 minutes on it, you start to walk like John Wayne. Whereas this, at least, I'm sat in relative comfort. There's no carpet, so you could almost hose it out. Actually, maybe don't mix water with electricity, but you could certainly sweep it out. These seats look like they've been finished in leather, which I guarantee is not leather. But again, if you come in here with wet swim shorts, it's not really a problem. You get a USB point and auxiliary inputs. You get decent sized door pockets. You also get the all important cup holder. It really isn't too bad. It does make some quite weird noises, this. It almost sounds like it's haunted. Listen to this. When you take your foot off the accelerator, 
strange, isn't it? A bit like a spaceship. Ah, road ahead closed. Right, we're going on a bit of a detour then. These roads are so narrow. I mean, I'm used to driving around the Peak District and those roads are narrow too, but these take us to another level. So it's quite good that I'm driving something no bigger than a clown's shoe. We got some really bad weather the other day as so Hurricane Fiona passed. Luckily, it wasn't a direct hit. And thankfully, there were no injuries or fatalities. But now, it's as if it never happened. It's 27 degrees, the humidity level's dropped, and it is a beautiful, bright blue day. As Mark Twain once said, you can go to heaven if you like. I'd rather stay here in Bermuda. Well, I think that's about it then. So, thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. So, yeah, cheers, guys. See you next time.